Coming up in both Cambodia and South Vietnam. But at the top of today's news, West Penn Hospital recently ordered its doctors not to perform an abortion after the 12th week of pregnancy. And that decision has drawn some criticism from the local feminist movement. This morning, the Pittsburgh chapter of the National Organization for Women staged a protest demonstration in front of West Penn Hospital, while its leaders delivered letters protesting the late-term ban to hospital officials. An Al spokesperson said West Penn's decision affects young girls and poor women. This decision will particularly um, influence w poor women and young women. Uh, there are many classifications of women who do not recognize the signs of pregnancy early enough. Why do you think that is? Abortion. Why? Um, young women who have never been pregnant before, older women, menopausal women who um, do not have regular periods, people, women who have health problems. Um, that another reason we feel that there's a need for second-term abortion is the fact that genetic defects are unrecognizable, undeterminable until after the 12th week, generally. West Penn put that late-term abortion ban into effect following the recent manslaughter conviction of Dr. Kenneth Edelin in Boston. He'd performed one of those abortions. A West Penn spokesman said that Edelin, the Edelin decision places many obstetricians in legal jeopardy. Well, it's now official. The brother of the mayor, James Flaherty, and the former mayor of Wilkinsburg, Alex Jaffers, will run as an independent Democratic team for county commissioners. In making their announcement this morning, the pair zeroed in on what they claim is wasteful spending and corruption in Allegheny government. There are only two planks in our platform. One, cut down waste, and two, clean up government. Since the present commissioners came into office, City of Pittsburgh spending has only gone up 28% from $80 million to $102.5 million. But the county spending has gone up 160% from $66 million to $170.8 million last year. Then to add insult, the additional taxes to pay for this are wrung out of the homeowners in this county through property assessments made by non-professional assessors who are usually political appointees of the county commissioners. Allegheny County is ready for a massive dose of efficient, honest government. Jaffer is charged the same kind of corruption that occurred in Washington County is now showing up in Allegheny County. Well, there's hey, I've been thinking. What? That you're really something. Oh, go on. Oh, you put so much love into everything you do. You're baking, you're sewing. And how'd you get Billy's shirt so white? Final touch fabric softener. I didn't ask how you got it soft. How'd you get it white? Final touch, with bluing for extra whiteness. You found a fabric softener that whitens too. <laughs> Billy, you've got yourself one special mommy. What does it cost to make ham more appealing? Omelets more delicious. Salads more attractive. The truth is, with Kling Peaches, it doesn't cost much, because even though they're fancy, Kling Peaches are not expensive. Looking for value and flavor? Look for canned Kling Peaches at your nearest Giant Eagle supermarket. McDonald's introduces a new, improved morning. Yeah, morning. That's why McDonald's has a new breakfast menu with hot cakes and country pork sausage. We know, morning. So McDonald's has melt-in-your-mouth Danish pastries, egg McMuffin, and your choice of four juices. We've made eating a good breakfast out quick, convenient, and inexpensive because we know about morning. We know. Announcing Zare Dollarama time. Check these low, low prices on Hoover Floor Care products during this special one-week sale. Save on Hoover vacuums this week only at Zare. 
There's a negotiating session set for tonight in that strike in the Moon Area School District. That's going to be the first bargaining that's taken place there in 10 days in that dispute between the district and its non-teaching employees. That strike's closed down cafeterias and curtailed cleanup work in all of the Moon School buildings except for the junior high. Well, President Ford and his daughter attended a black tie dinner in Washington last night. John Cochran has more on the story. And his daughter Susan attended a benefit performance by singer Barbara Streisand at the Kennedy Center. The benefit was to raise money for a sports program for mentally retarded young people. After the stage show, Mr. Ford and other celebrities briefly watched a warm-up demonstration by children who will take part in this summer's Special Olympic Games for the retarded. The president said he was pinch hitting for his wife, who has a special interest in retarded children. The first lady had planned to attend, but instead stayed here at the White House after suffering pain from a chronic arthritic condition. Because of widespread interest and concern over Mrs. Ford's health, the White House physician issued a statement over the weekend detailing her arthritic problems and denying she has had any recurrence of cancer. Mrs. Ford has undergone chemotherapy since her cancer operation last fall, but her doctor says her present discomfort is not the result of any side effects from the chemotherapy. The doctor's findings are based on an exam Mrs. Ford had two months ago. She will undergo another cancer checkup in May. John Cochran, NBC News, the White House. Well, today, President Ford will swear in Carla Hills as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Well, I think everyone will agree that $3,500 is not bad pay for less than an hour's work. That's the fee Baylor University will pay John Dean for a 30-minute speech tonight, followed by a 20-minute question and answer session. A Baylor president, Abner McCall, said, quote, I wouldn't pay $3 to go over and listen to him. Dean's speech is entitled The Arrogance of Power. The guru Maharaji, that 17-year-old self-proclaimed perfect master, assisted in the birth of his first child yesterday. The religious leader's wife, Marilyn, gave birth to an 8-pound, eight 8-ounce eight girl at the guru's Divine Light Mission near Malibu, California. And Sandy Allen, considered the world's tallest woman, has been adopted by the townspeople of Flora, Illinois. Now that's where Dan Gerber lives, and perhaps you remember that's where the couple had their first date not long ago. Sandy is five foot five inches tall. Dan is seven, no, excuse me, I, she is seven foot five <laughs> inches tall. Dan is seven foot mm -hmm. two inches. Well, this past weekend, they celebrated Sandy Allen Day in Flora. It was not exactly what you would call an intimate get-together for Sandy and Dan. In fact, just about all of the town's 5,000 people followed the couple everywhere they went. Now they're beginning to wonder if being tall means never having any privacy. It was sort of the same problem the daughter of the Duke of Westminster had when she married the Earl of Litchfield on Saturday. Lady Lenora really wanted a nice little quiet wedding. But well, before it was over, crowds estimated at 10,000 turned out to cheer the couple and their 1,400 invited guests that included three queens, one king, two princes, and seven princesses. Say, Southern Florida is enjoying a record tourist season. Now, that's somewhat surprising considering our sagging economy. However, according to Dr. Edward Wallach, a behavioral psychologist, the rush to sun and fun country was quite predictable. The theory is that most of the vacationers feel the bottom is going to fall out, so they'd better enjoy themselves while they can. Bob, it's sort of that old last hurrah, last fling premise, Get I your guess. mind off all the problems and just get down there and bask in the sun. In sports now, our Penguins saw their six-game unbeaten streak snapped last night by the Buffalo Sabres by a score of 8-4. to four. That defeat came on the heels of a big win over Philadelphia Saturday night at the arena. And the Pens are going to be back at home Wednesday night. They'll go against the Boston Bruins at that point. In exhibition baseball, the Pirates topped the Cincinnati Reds 7-1 to one down in Tampa yesterday. They're going to be up against the Detroit Tigers today. Overseas now, the Phnom Penh Airport in Cambodia was shelled again today setting fire to an airliner and killing five airport workers. That airlift of 1,300 tons a day of rice, fuel, and ammunition, however, was not impeded by the shelling. As those daily shellings continue to pound Phnom Penh, the number of refugees continues to grow. In better days, a luxury hotel was planned on the banks of the Tonlesop River. It was almost finished. Then the war came. Now it houses refugees from all over the country. This hotel camp is run cooperatively by a number of the charitable organizations. 
hundreds of refugee families are jammed into small spaces. They've curtained off their living area to give themselves some privacy. There's a school for the younger children. These refugee families are completely dependent on the voluntary agencies. What will happen if and when the agencies are forced to evacuate is hard to imagine. Next to the hotel itself, in a smaller building, is a medical clinic run by World Vision of Australia. Although it does treat both children and adults, the large majority of patients are children. The main problem, malnutrition. Even though they've been receiving rice rations, they simply haven't had an adequate diet. Three to four hundred children a day come. Babies are most susceptible to malnutrition. The doctors here estimate that of the babies that come to the clinic, five a day die. And the number that find their way to the clinic is a very small percentage of the children in the city. Jack Reynolds, NBC News, Phnom Penh. Meanwhile, the Ford administration's request for $222 million in emergency aid for Cambodia looks like it's in trouble. Foreign Relations Subcommittee Chairman Hubert Humphrey predicts that the full Senate is going to turn down that request. And in related news, there are reports today of house-to-house -house fighting between North Vietnamese troops and South Vietnamese defenders in the Central Highlands. Nine Americans are said to be trapped in mountainous hamlets, and American officials say the U.S. citizens are all right. One source said they are in good spirits, they have food and water. One of the trapped Americans is Paul Struharik of the Agency for International Development. We'll check more late news right after we take time out for these messages. Come here, Mom. I gotta talk to you. When you buy me a sugarless gum, would you please get a sugar set from New Bazooka Sugarless Bubblegum? Me and the kids, we love blowing bubbles. And Bazooka happens to be one of the juiciest, tastiest bubblegums ever. And like you say, Mom, since it's sugarless, there's less chance of me getting cavities. Stick with me, Mom. I'll let you know what's happening. Bazooka Sugarless, in stores now. Men's watches have progressed from stem winding to self winding. And now the ultimate men's watch, the LED quartz electronic. This is the magnificent Kentronics LED quartz. Push this button for bright instant time. Push this button, you can read the date. Push both buttons and tick off the seconds. This incredible watch regularly sells for $250, but for just three days, it's on sale for $149.95 at Gimbel's. Remember, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only. Henry, where are my mushrooms? Don't stock them anymore. What? Stock these now. Mr. Mushroom. Yeah, uh, yeah. Got more flavor, because they're put up in their own natural cooking juices. Like the missus puts up her vegetables. That's so. There you are. Your mushrooms are packed in plain salt water, like most. Then these should taste better. Sarah, they do. Mr. Mushroom, put up in their own natural cooking juices. Thrift Drug Stores are now celebrating old fashioned days with a complete lineup of your favorite health and beauty aids, spring cleaning aids, and household sundries. Get big savings like these. Bayer Aspirin Tablets, bottle of 179 cents. Earthborn Shampoo, 8 ounces, only 97 cents. For these and many more values, stop in at your nearby Thrift Drug Store and get old fashioned bargains, old fashioned prices, old fashioned savings during Thrift Drug's old fashioned days. The U.S. Railway Association said today that about 900 miles of track that it proposed to abandon here in Pennsylvania could eventually be included in its new slimmed-down semi-public freight system if future studies show those lines could be made to be profitable. USRA Vice President Richard Sullivan told a meeting of business and community leaders in Philadelphia this morning that the preliminary plan to restructure the bankrupt railroads in the Northeast and the Midwest can and probably will be changed before it's submitted to Congress come the end of July. Sullivan acknowledged there are about 728 miles of track in Pennsylvania, most of it knocked out of service during Tropical Storm Agnes back in 1972. Sullivan says if those serviceable lines could be rehabilitated and if studies show they could be profitable, well, they too could be included in that consolidated railway system. 
Well, there is still time to stock up if you want to before prices go up again at our state liquor stores. The latest price hike is set to go into effect on Wednesday, but you're not going to be able to see it in every case. Some of the price tags will be raised, but on other items, the size and the proof and the age are simply going to be reduced. The Liquor Control Board says it's just a matter of inflation in the liquor industry, but of course, the state's markup and taxes are also going to be going up. Overseas again, Henry Kissinger's visit in Ankara, Turkey today is a follow-up to a meeting that he held in Brussels on Friday with the Greek foreign minister. And Richard Valeriani has a report. Saving at the hotel pool in Aswan, taking a break from his talks with President Sadat when he got word that Turkish leaders would receive him in Ankara to discuss the Cyprus situation. Earlier, newsmen traveling with Kissinger had been told that while he was likely to meet with the Turkish foreign minister before returning to Washington, that meeting would probably take place in Brussels, and there was no chance he would go to Ankara. But following his meeting with Greek Foreign Minister Bitsios in Brussels last Friday, Kissinger suggested to the Turks that he go personally to Ankara to speed up the process of getting negotiations started. And they accepted, despite their anger over the cutoff in American military aid. Kissinger's hope of persuading the U.S. Congress to restore military aid to Turkey is one of the main reasons he's eager to get negotiations underway. He's looking for a new forum to bring the Greeks and Turks together in such a way that neither side will appear to be giving in to the other. Kissinger also hopes to get the Greek and Turkish Cypriot leaders to resume their talks, but preferably away from Cyprus itself. It now appears that the United Nations may serve as such a forum. Richard Valeriani, NBC News in Damascus. After this latest Middle Eastern trip, Henry Kissinger is expected to hold some talks with Latin American countries. And according to two articles out today, the CIA at one time hired some mafia gunmen to assassinate Cuban Premier Fidel Castro. Two former aides to the late Robert Kennedy are quoted in the New York Times today saying that Kennedy told them the CIA wanted Castro killed before the Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Now, Time magazine is quoting what it calls credible sources in its charges that the CIA was involved in plots to kill not only Castro, but Rafael Trujillo of the Dominican Republic and Francois Duvalier of Haiti as well. Bob, it's time for the weather. Looks like the uh, weather service was only kidding earlier there when they were talking about all that snow. The news is reasonably good at this hour. Instead of the four inches of snow that we've been talking about earlier, we're only going to get two. That heavy snow warning has been canceled and it's been replaced with a traveler's advisory. That's a little bit less ominous anyway. Before we look at that, Let's take a look outside where we currently have some snow flurries and 30 degrees to go along with them. The humidity is at 58%. The barometer is at 29.99 inches and it's falling from there. And the winds right now are from the east at 12 miles an hour and the pigeons are fine and so are the people on the streets. Now on to the forecast. We're issuing a traveler's advisory for this afternoon and tonight. Occasional snow this afternoon, tonight too, with accumulations of around two inches by evening. Our high this afternoon will be in the mid-30s, which means that a lot of that snow might be kind of slushy, and our low tonight will be in the mid-20s. Mostly cloudy is the outlook for Tuesday, chance of a rain shower or a snow flurry, whichever you like, and the high near 40 degrees. Chances of precipitation, 90% this afternoon, 80% tonight, and 40% for tomorrow. Now, here's what our weather fellow Ken Phillips has in store for the rest of the five-day period. Looking beyond today's snow, tomorrow's rain and snow, Wednesday, we will see a little bit of sunshine with a high of 42. Thursday, more rain and snow and a high near 40 degrees. And for Friday, it's going to be clearing with a high of about 40 degrees. And so it's just march, marching on. Was that a pigeon? I uh, admit well, there my was a, there vision was a is not 2020. I thought it was a rooster. It's a large a rooster pigeon. on the Pittsburgh streets. <laughs> well, okay. I wasn't sure where the film was shot. I thought maybe that was one of our rural photographers that we had out this morning. Here's an interesting story. A group of men followed the historic route of Sir Francis Drake in crossing the Atlantic. They finally arrived in San Francisco yesterday, and we get more on that story from Fred Briggs. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single publicity stunt. Building a replica of Sir Francis Drake's ship, the Golden Hind, in Plymouth, England, and sailing it all the way to San Francisco Bay, where Drake reportedly sailed almost 400 years ago. Drake, of course, didn't have the benefit of the Panama Canal, so it took him more than three times as long to get here. Nobody was here to greet Drake either, which is perhaps why he left after making a few brief repairs of his ship Drake made his trip for the glory of England and Queen Elizabeth I. 
This crew did it for the San Francisco tourist industry and some businessmen who planned to make the ship a museum at Fisherman's Wharf. For the most part, the voyage was enjoyable, although at times a little rough. In the galley, everything would go flying. You know, if you're sitting on a bench, the bench would go from under you. All the food on the table would disappear. The knives and forks on the ship would roll across the deck. <laughs> People were flying in the gutters, you know. There was some difficulty. The tide was going out while the boat was trying to get in, but it finally made it. Journey's end, never to sail again. But then it wouldn't make much money sailing, nor was it intended to. Fred Briggs, NBC News, San Francisco. Bob, wouldn't that be a nice way to spend a year? I get seasick. I don't know about you. But well, no, I have the adventure. All I'd need is the money. Back to the real world now. The PUC has scheduled three days of hearings here in Pittsburgh to get people's opinions on proposed rate increases for Duquesne Light and Bell Telephone. Bell wants a $116 million rate hike. Duquesne Light is looking for a 28% increase on electrical bills. Now, the first session is set for tomorrow at the State Office Building. The afternoon and evening hearings will continue through Thursday. There's also a Thursday session set for the Beaver County Courthouse. Bob? County Controller Bob Friend says that he's pulling out of politics and he will not be running in the May primary. The former pirate pitcher served two terms in that office, but he says that some recent business losses and the fact that he didn't think his campaign was going to get enough financial backing are behind his decision. Friend led the Republican side of the ticket when he ran for a second term as controller four years ago. We'll check on the rest of the day's developments, but first, let's take this time out. Hi. I'm Wayne Rogers, and I'm here to tell you that whether or not you want to make use of President Ford's clemency program, you should know that there is a clemency information center. They can explain all your options and answer your questions. You call them collect at area code 317-635-8259. That's the clemency information center. Collect at 317-635-8259. From the time you're his age... To the time you're my age. To the time you're my age. You'll probably have toothaches. So you should know that Origel temporarily relieves a toothache. And Origel D does the same for denture pain. And baby Origel relieves teething pain. Origel. For everyone with teeth. And those who used to have them. And those who are getting them. The Origel family. Fast relief of toothache, denture pain, and teething pain. What would you do for a pain in the neck this long? Accompanied by a 15-foot high headache, a five-pound toothache, or all those aches and pains from too much monkeying around, or even that achy feeling from hauling around the house all day. In the animal world, often little can be done to relieve pain. But in the people world, there's aspirin one of our most widely used effective pain remedies. Even now, medical research is exploring new directions for the use of aspirin. But too much, like too much medicine of any kind, can be harmful. Use medicine only as prescribed or directed. With medicine, don't horse around. It doesn't pay. Instead, hang loose and play it cool. Life is fragile. Handle with care. Governor Schaap wants to boost the housing industry in Pennsylvania with home mortgages that are 1% below the going rate. Now, Schaap says that the rate discount would make it possible for low- and middle-income families to get mortgages at about 8%, and that would stimulate the sagging home-building industry. Well, our research shows nothing in the Guinness Book of World Records on gum chewing, but a young boy from Cleveland is really trying hard to change all that. The book that Guinness built out of world records. These are the jaws that chew the gum, perhaps long enough to get into the book that Guinness built out of world records. And this is the face that goes with the jaws that chew the gum, perhaps long enough to get into the book that Guinness built out of world records. Steve Tratner is the name that goes with the face that goes with the jaws that chew the gum, perhaps long enough to get into the book that Guinness built out of world records. That's more than a thousand hours of gum chewing. I know. 1,680 hours of gum chewing. Aren't your jaws sore? Not, a, not too much. 
I'm used to it. How much gum have you gone through? About seven or eight packs. How frequently do you change sticks of gum? Well, after about two or three days, the gum starts dissolving. And I only ha have like about a quarter of gum left in my mouth than how much I put in. So I, ch I put in some more to make it bigger. I think it's great that he, is, he has decided to do something and is sticking with it. I also thought he was a little bit nuts at first. And of course, I think more about the teeth and about the bed sheets. But he has been very good about it. We're making sure he still brushes his teeth. The sheets haven't been all gummed up yet. One might think that 10-year-old Steve Tratner would be the expert to answer a long-time question. But no, Steve even sleeps with the chewing gum in his mouth, so from him, there will be no answer to that old question of song, does the chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? Bob, how do you brush your teeth with chewing gum in your mouth? Uh, just switch it back and forth, I guess, you know, you brush this side. I think side. that's a marvelous story, except that it has just occurred to me that I have a teenager at my house who has had, I think, chewing gum in her mouth for about the last three years. Now she's going to try to break this record. Okay. A city police officer has blasted the probationary sentences that have been given to five men who beat him with baseball bats when he came to the aid of another man who was being beaten. City Detective Glenn Hoare shot and wounded two of those men in a fight last September on the north side after they'd beaten a man for no apparent reason. Judge James Clark found all five guilty of aggravated assault and resisting arrest, and he put them on probation for from two to three years. And Detective Hoare is charged that the judge simply is not concerned about the safety of the people who have to walk the north side streets. Now let's roll the newsreel camera and check out happenings in Braddock, Carrick, and Zelianopol. <laughs> Second, third, and fourth graders got a chance to learn the fundamentals of basketball in an eight-week course in Zelianopol. Sponsored by the YMCA, the game makes use of smaller basketballs and lowered baskets. You could take your choice of ham or spaghetti at this dinner sponsored by St. Wendelin's Cafeteria. Everyone was welcome, and they obviously enjoyed the fair. It was Deer Burger Night in Braddock Hills with the Welfare and Fire Association as the sponsor. Movies on sports added to the evening's enjoyment. And that leaves us with just enough time to remind you that the Weather Service has pulled back on that heavy snow warning of four inches, and now what we have is a traveler's advisory. We'll be getting about two inches of snow by tonight. That's our noon edition of News Watch. Eleanor and I will be back again tomorrow at noon. Have a good afternoon. You have just seen News Watch, the most complete, factual, and pictorial television news broadcast available. The next News Watch at 6 this evening. Ship and Shore blouses are available at all six Gimbel stores. Today on the Mod Squad. Stunt driver is killed, and Link believes it wasn't an accident. Today on the Mod Squad at 5. 
Murphy Oil Soap, natural vegetable oils. The everything cleaner that cleans everything cleaner. Cleans and preserves leather and vinyl. In Pittsburgh, this is Channel 11, the news station. On March 17th, a contestant may win at least $100,000 in NBC's $100,000 Shamrock Sweepstakes. That lucky winner could be one of the contestants on Blank Check Today. These are the numbers our players will use. They could mean a fortune for the check writer and these challengers in this game of ESP, where the studio audience can also win fabulous prizes playing Blank Check. And now here's the star of Blank Check, 